So the question is, is there a way to do time of day routing for our IVR? So I want to have like a day menu, I want to have a night menu. Uh, how do I route to those depending on the day? The answer is yes, we would do that via conditional branching. And uh, we have several different applications that will conditionally branch. So one is go to if. Uh, you can use go to with the if function. You can use go sub if. But in particular, if you want to route based on time, you would use go to if time. So there is a, uh, there's a dial plan application called uh, core show application go to if time. Oops. Not up on the screen, OK? So there is a dial plan application called go to if time. And if you just do core show application go to if time, you can see you can specify the times, uh, days, months, what time zone, um, and then if, if true and the label if false. And uh, a real a common practice is to basically create like a, a, a series of like go to if times. And you can do this for like for your holidays, basically. Like, you know, so you route to the holiday menu if it's a holiday. And if it falls through all the way and it doesn't hit any of the holiday times, then you, you go to the main menu. That is an excellent question. So the question was, if I have a multi-tenant PBX, and I let's say I have uh, several different mailboxes that are 7001. I have 7001 at company A, 7001 for company B. How do I denote that in SIP.comp for the message waiting indicator? So if we look at the sample SIP config, and I don't know for this fact, but I'm, I'm just banking on that the answer will be in here, I'm pretty sure that the way you would do that is you would say mailbox number at mailbox context. And so let's just confirm that. Uh, yes. I love it. I love it when I'm right. I don't love it when I'm wrong. Uh, but but there's, this, there's the syntax there. So you would do uh, the, the mailbox number and then at context. You're good to go. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if you have a voice mailbox. Yes, OK, another great question. So um, the question is, what about uh, for the voicemail main application? How do I specify uh, multiple contexts? If I have multiple voicemail.conf contexts, how do I specify that to voicemail main? So I'll ask if you've been paying attention, where do I go to find that information? OK, it, it could be in voicemail.conf sample. But it's not a parameter I want to configure in voicemail.conf. I want to configure the dial plan application voicemail main. So how do I find out more about the dial plan application voicemail main? Core show application voicemail main. So if you do core show application voicemail main, here is the uh, syntax right there, mailbox at context. And then you have various options that you can specify so for example, you can tell it to you know, skip checking the passcode. Uh, some people really like that, because if you, if you dial from your desk phone, then you don't have to enter your credentials. That's kind of nice. You can configure like that. I will, I will let you lab that up, and then let me know. Uh, maybe. <laughs> That's my that's my answer in class. Often when I'm when I'm teaching class, a lot of times we you know we get into hypotheticals. Well, could I do this and could I do this and could I do this? And um, it's always fun to experiment. So we're a little short on time, but um, you know I I definitely like to experiment too. So and I encourage you guys log into your VM, uh, SSH to your box and and test some stuff out and say oh I wonder if I could do this or check out the documentation and 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 find out. It's a good it's a good resource. So. In our last section here, we're going to pull it together in 45 minutes, perhaps. We are going to cover variables, functions, expressions, and conditional branching. So for those of you guys that have come in, uh, maybe you know never done any programming before, hopefully we've given you some tools now to say, well, hey, I could actually do some dial plan scripting. Maybe I've always been using a GUI, but now I've learned about some of the syntax in extensions.conf. I've learned about the sample files that give me a lot of information. I can check for additional syntax 
on the CLI using core show applications, you have a lot of tools at your disposal. Now let's get into some, some real programming type of stuff and we'll get into variables. So in case you've uh, forgotten your, your high school math class, you know, a variable is basically a, a name that can hold a value. So if you guys remember uh, high school algebra, they had like x, x plus 1 equals 5, and you know, OK, the value of x is 4, because 4 plus 1 equals 5. Same kind of concept with a variable. A variable is, is going to be a name. It's going to hold a value. It's kind of like a, this box here is the variable, and that name of that box is called trunk. See, I've named the box trunk. And the value that I store inside that box is server, server, or SIP uh, slash server dash trunk. So the way this works is, if I want to dial, I could do a dial statement where I say dial SIP slash server trunk, and I could specify that. Or I could specify a variable. So in this case, I'm dereferencing the variable using a dollar sign and curly brackets. And with that dollar sign and curly brackets, it's basically saying, I'm saying, give me the value that's inside that box. So it's kind of like you have a cup. And inside that cup, you might have, you know, like Dr. Pepper, or you might have Red Bull, or you might have Sprite. And if you say, give me the cup, you get the Dr. Pepper. If you say, you know, give me this cup, you get the Red Bull, right? That's the same kind of concept. I'm saying, give me this variable. It's going to give me the value inside when I use the dollar sign and curly brackets syntax, right? So uh, this is the way it kind of works. In asterisk, we have a couple different kinds of variables. In particular, what we would call user-defined channel variables. It's just that. A user-defined channel variable is a, channel, is a variable that you define. You can call it whatever you want. You can store whatever value you want inside. And it's going to be active on that channel. Here's an example. I'm going to use the set application, the set dial plan application. And I'm going to pass it the arguments variable name equals variable value. You can note that when I set the variable, I just use the name. I don't put the dollar sign in the curly brackets, right? So no dollar sign in curly brackets means I'm putting something in the cup. Then I want to get the value out of the cup. In this case, I'm using the say number application. The say number application is going to do exactly that. It's going to say whatever number. If you, if you give it like 5, it'll say Allison Smith will come on and say 5. Uh, so in this case, it's going to say 0, right? Because I've put 0 into the cup, and then I say, what's the number in the cup? Give me that out. And it's just like as though I passed 0 as an argument. And then I'll hang up. Here is the read application that I've been talking about. Read application uh, prompts the caller with a, uh, an audio file in uh, varspool asterisk uh, sounds. And it writes that to a variable. In this case, the variable is called number. It's going to play back, you entered, and then it's going to say whatever number. So if I call into extension 1001 and I type in 123, it's going to play me back 123. Now, here's a question for you guys. If uh, I call into extension 1001 and I type in 123, and at the exact same time, my buddy calls into extension 1001 and he types in 456, what is going to be the value of the variable? Is the number variable going to be 123 or is it going to be 456? Exactly. The answer is they will both be different because they're on different channels. Okay, This is what we call the scope of a variable. And for a channel variable, the, channel is, the variable is only active on that channel. So when this phone dials 1001, it creates a channel to asterisk. And it can set variables on that channel. And they can have the same exact names as variables on this channel going into asterisk. And they don't conflict with each other because they're on different channels. That's what we call a channel variable. It has that scope. There are also some predefined channel variables. So asterisk sets for you some variables on the channel, some data on the channel, that you can access and use for your uh, good. In this case, I've noted uh, just a few of them. There are actually many. But uh, context, extend, priority, those will give you the current context, the current extension, the current priority. The extend variable is particularly powerful. When we want to do a pattern match, 
So if you guys remember earlier, I did the pattern match with the XXX, and that matched any number. What if I want to know what somebody actually dialed? I want to know, did they dial 111 or did they dial 555? Well, I can use the extend variable to get that data. It'll tell me what is the current extension. So that's powerful for that reason. Some dial plan applications will actually set a variable on the channel. In this case, dial. There, a lot of these are like status applications. So when you call an AGI, it'll set AGI status. When you call read, you get read status. When you call dial, you get dial status. Now, dial status can have a couple different values. But in particular, they'll have, it'll have the value like no answer or busy. So if I call the phone, and I call it for 20 seconds, and nobody picks up, it times out, and it's going to exit the dial application. And when it exits that application, it's going to exit with a status, no answer. That means nobody answered. I reached a timeout. If, however, I dial the phone, and I'm on the phone, I see a call coming in, and I hit ignore, then my phone's going to send back, hey, I'm, I'm busy. I'm on the phone. And when it exits the dial application to go to the next priority, to execute the next priority in the dial plan, it's going to set the status busy. So you can see here, when I exit the dial application, I'm, I'm setting one of many different statuses. I could, it could be no answer. It could be busy. And we're going to be able to route conditionally based on what that variable value is. I'm going to say, give me, give me what's in the cup. Give me the value of dial, dial status. And if dial status is no answer, I'll do one thing. If dial, st dial status is busy, I'll do something else. We'll look at that in just a sec here. Uh, this next slide it has a bit of contention, and I, um, it's kind of funny. Within the training department, we have emailed this slide back and forth to each other a lot and trying to figure out, are, are variables in asterisk case sensitive or are they case insensitive? And the answer is, it depends on the variable, and it depends on how you use it. <laughs> there was a recently, if you guys go on the users list, uh, Mark Michelson recently put out a call, and he said, hey, what do you guys think? If you do this, then the, then the, the uh, dial plan variables will be case insensitive. If you do this over here, then they are case sensitive. We want to pick one and stick with it. Give us some community input. So you can actually go on the users list. You can see he just posted this message like last month. And, and when I saw that, I was like, aha! This is, like, this is giving me no set of heartache trying to figure this out. Anyway. Uh, in terms of variable naming, I'll, I'll make the point that uh, the dial plan variables that asterisk sets are going to be all uppercase. If you notice that, like these ones, context, extend, priority, dial status. And I recommend that for your variables that you set, make them either uh, like all lowercase or what we call camel case or mixed case is a, uh, is a best practice. It's not necessary. But I just recommend that, and that's, that's a quick and easy way to remind you, did I set this variable, or, or was it an asterisk channel variable that I'm taking advantage of, a preset variable? Let's talk about uh, debugging for a moment. Debugging is, is, is kind of like I've written some program, and now I want to uh, debug that program to see how it runs. So when you run a program, you want to know what value was in that variable. You want to do that from the CLI. And in this case, I can use uh, one of several applications. I could use noop or I could use verbose. And so this is what happens. I have extension 222. I'm using the set application to set a number to 4567. And then I'm no opting out. And I'm saying the value of number is, and then I dereference the number with the curly sign in, uh, uh, dollar sign in curly brackets. On the CLI, when I actually call that number with my uh, verbose logging enabled, or you know, verbose output on the CLI enabled, I'm going to see it's executing 222 at the context uh, priority 2, no op. It's going to give me the channel name here. And it says the value of number is, and then it actually tells me what it is. So this is, a, this is helpful to look at the CLI, because oftentimes, especially if you're routing conditionally based on the value that's inside a variable, and you don't get the ex result that you expected, you want to check what, what's the actual value in that variable. Is it what I think it is? That'll help you out. Um, another, another application is uh, Chan Dump. So, or it might be Dump Chan, Chan Dump or Dump Chan. Uh, if you use that, it'll actually give you all the variables on that channel. That's, that's really nice. I, I use that one application, I get all the variables, makes it nice. 
Let's talk about a dial plan function. Now, if you're used to programming, a function in asterisk is not at all like a function in a regular programming language. So in a regular programming language, a function tends to be like a, like a procedural subroutine. It's, it's a piece of code that you can, you can give a name to and then call to execute that piece of code. And uh, in asterisk, we call that a subroutine, and we're going to use GoSub to do that. I'll talk about GoSub in my session tomorrow. But uh, in asterisk, a function is, is more like a super variable, or it's really like a data structure. So you're going to be able to use it to get or set data on the channel. So the same way you can set a single variable on the channel, you can use a dial plan function to be able to set multiple variables or various variables with one function. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the syntax here, it's kind of like a function, kind of looks like a variable with arguments. Okay? So like here's a variable, and then here's a function, and you would pass the arguments in, into the parentheses. Right? So an example of this is the timeout variable. The timeout variable, or I'm sorry, the timeout function, the timeout function is a function that is capable of setting three different types of data, right? So what we could have done is we could have had three different variables. So you'd have a response timeout variable, and a digit timeout variable, and an absolute timeout variable. And if we did that for every single piece of data, we would end up with like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of variables. That's, that's no good. Instead, we've got a function here. And by calling that one function, I can then tell it which one of those specific things I want. For example, if I want to, if I want to get the uh, the digit timeout, I want to say what's the digit timeout. I can pass timeout and uh, give it digit. If I want to set data on the channel, I can, let's say I want to set the absolute timeout. I can do timeout and pass it absolute, and that'll uh, set it to, to 360. The other thing functions do is they can. Uh, they can act on data or sometimes manipulate that data. So you've got like the math function. In this case, I've got the len function. And here's what I'm talking about with the extend variable. Okay? Now, this, this uh, extension here at the bottom may look a little tricky if you're kind of new to programming. But I guarantee you, once you start doing a little dial plan scripting, this is, this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, the idea here is, first I have a pattern match. The pattern match is x dot. That basically means the dot means any, any length of, of characters, right? So as long as it starts with one digit, it'll take any two character string of any length. So this will match 555. It'll match 7689354. It, both of those strings will match this pattern match, right? So because it's a very broad pattern match, it's going to match almost anything, I want to know what was actually dialed. And so I can call the extend variable. If you dial 555, the extend variable will have the value 555. If I call 7896, it'll have that value as well. Then I'm using the len function to say, what's the length of that string? So if I dial 555, extend will have 555. I'm passing that into len. Len will say that is three characters long. So that will turn it into the, letter, into the number three. I'm passing that to the say digits application, so the say digits will say three, right? If I say four, five, six, seven, then say digits will say four because it, the extend is four, five, six, seven. The length of it is four characters long. Here are some more functions: caller ID. I guarantee you that is one you are going to use. You can set caller ID number. You can set the caller ID name. Um, string format time. Uh, honestly, the best. Uh, uh, documentation on this is, is, is on the Linux shell to run man string format time. And that's going to give you all the kind of parameters you can use for that. That's very helpful. And uh, here's math, like I talked about, which allows you to do floating point math. You can do that in the dial plan as well. Speaking of math, let's talk about expressions. So expressions are, again, if you remember back to math class, because programming has a lot to do with math. Uh, an expression is, is really simply a, a mathematical expression. So an expression is a mathematical expression. If I say uh, 4 plus 4, that's an expression. It evaluates to the value 8, right? Um, 2 minus 1, that's an expression, right? 
So we're going to be able to use mathematical expressions within the dial plan, and these are going to be valuable for us. So it's going to be composed of strings. It could have integers or booleans. A boolean is like, is it true or is it false? So I could say, is, is 1 greater than 2? And it'll tell me, no, that's false. And so I can, I can uh, use that to route. And I can use this to test values. I can use it to alter strings. So I, I might have a string and I want to add a number to it. I can do it with an expression. And I can perform mathematical calculations. Here is the syntax for an expression. It is going to use a dollar sign and square brackets. So wh whatever I stick in between the dollar sign and the square brackets, that's going to be an expression. And I'm just comparing it to a variable. And I'm showing a variable encapsulated inside an expression with that kind of syntax. We're going to have uh, various mathematical operators available to us, plus, minus, division, modulus. We're going to have relational va uh, variables available to us, equals, less than. This, uh, this sign right here with the, we call that bang. The exclamation point is called bang. Bang equals then means does not equal. So if I want to test, are these two values, do these two values not equal each other? If they don't, do something. If they do, do something different. This is how we're going to get start getting into conditional branching using expressions. Uh, of course, you can get on wiki.asterisk.org to find out more about all of the logic that's available to you. I'll tell you this, at a very simple level, um, if you're just doing some really basic dial plan programming, most of what you're going to need to know is how to add one. And I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So uh, let's say I have a stored value. So uh, in this case, I can use a set application. I'm setting a variable called var2. And I'm setting it to the output of this expression, 2 plus 3. So 2 plus 3 is going to evaluate to 5. Uh, the variable var2 is going to have the value 5, which we see here on the CLI. Right? Um, I can use it to increment a count. And there's also a, uh, a dial plan function called inc, which will, which will do the same thing. You can do, also do it this way. So in this case, I've, a, um, take, I've taken a variable. I'm setting the variable count to the value 3. I then take count, and I set it to whatever its previous value was, plus 1. So it previously was 3 here. So it had the value 3, and then I add 1. So that's going to equal 4. So this whole thing here is equal to 4. So now count is equal to 4. So when I no-op that out, it's going to have the value 4. Now we finally get to how do I use that logic with conditional branching. So this is the go to if application. Go to if is very similar to the go to application. It's going to go to a different place in the dial plan. It could go to a different context and extension and priority. It could go to a different extension within the same context. It can go to a different priority within the same extension. And we can route conditionally using an expression and then the true condition and the false, or the true destination and the false destination. So this would be an expression. So for example, 1 is greater than 2. That expression is false, so I will go to the false destination. If I said 1 is less than 2, then it would go to the true destination. Show you guys what I'm talking about. Here I am setting a variable in priority 1. I set the test variable to the value 1. Then I say, go to if the value of test variable is greater than 2. So it's basically saying, is 1 greater than 2? 1 is not greater than 2. That is false. So it's going to route to the monkey's application. Or I'm sorry, the monkey's uh, label, the priority label. So at, at the monkey's priority, it's going to use the playback application to play back a TT monkeys, which is actually like a real a real audio file that comes default on asterisk, and it's like, it's like a bunch of screaming monkeys. So you can use it. It's kind of fun. Uh, additionally, I can omit a destination. I can omit either the, either the true or the false case. And if I omit a destination, it'll just fall through to the next priority. So in this case, you can see I set the test variable equals to 1. I then say, is 1 greater than 2? No, it's false. And it goes to mo the monkey's uh, destination. 
if I reverse that, it said is one less is one less than two, and it was true. Since I've omitted the true destination, it'll just go to the next priority and play back TT weasels, if that makes sense. And you can omit either one. So let's see that in action. Okay, so now that we've learned about this, we want to do an incrementing loop. So for example, this is going to play into our IVR. Uh, like I told you guys, I want to be able to do something three times and then do something different, right? So in this case, I set my variable. It's called test variable. I set variable to one. I've got the begin uh, priority label there. I'm going to say go to if the test variable is greater than two. It is currently one. That is currently false. It is going to the uh, weasel's priority. There it will, or I'm sorry, the monkeys, the monkeys priority. There it will play back TT monkeys. It will now, look at this, it'll set test variable to its previous value plus one. I'm incrementing the count of that variable. So it previously was one, now it has the value two. And it's going to go to the begin priority label. Goes back up to the beginning, and now it's going to say is two greater than two. It's still false, so it's going to play monkeys again. Goes to the monkeys, it plays monkeys, it sets the test variable, increments it again, now the value is three. Now, when it goes to the begin priority, it says go to if three is greater than two, it is now true, it's going to go to the weasel's destination. At the weasel's priority, it will play back TT weasels, and then it will hang up. So you see here, we've got this kind of logic where it loops three times and then hangs up on the caller. And this is the kind of logic that we want to implement into our IVR uh, because, like I said, we don't want to leave that channel open all the time. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But a word of caution, what would happen if I set priority one as the begin priority label? So instead of having priority two as begin, what if I use priority one? What would happen? It would, exactly, it would reset the variable every time. It would be an infinite loop. This is a common programmatic mistake you, where you jump into the wrong place in the dial plan. And uh, so in this case, it's never, ever going to get to the weasel's priority. Because every single time it gets here, it increments the count. And then it'll go back to begin, where it then gets set back to 1. So that's uh, you know, something to watch. Here's our improved IVR example. Okay? This is basically the same as our previous IVR that I showed you with some additional logic, and the additional logic has been highlighted for you. So I am at, I answer the channel at the next priority, I set a variable, and I've, I've named it appropriately. I'm calling it failed attempts. I set failed attempts equals to zero because they have yet to fail. I have a menu beginning priority label. I say go to if the failed attempts variable is greater than two. Uh, since it's, it's not, it's zero. Uh, I'm gonna, I, that's false, I'm just gonna fall through to the next priority, if you guys see that. So if that were true, it would go to the hang-up destination. Since it's false, it just goes to the next priority, okay? So at the next priority, I play the background, main menu, I wait for five seconds, and then they have the same option. They could have invalid input, or they could have uh, a timeout. And so regardless of whether they had invalid input or whether they had timeout, at both of those places, I increment the count of the failed, ver uh, the failed attempts variable. I add one to it. Okay? So the menu beginning. And now I'm going to check again. So now it's got the value one. It times out again. Now it has the value two. It times out again. Three strikes and you're out. After three attempts, the condition is now true. And it goes to the hang up priority to hang up the call. This is the kind of logic that you want to implement in your dial plan for your IVR. That way, you know, they're not, they're not just kind of always stuck there in, a, in an infinite loop. You kind of give them three chances, three strikes, and you're out. Let's use our newfound power to uh, improve our voicemail, uh, our, our dial into voicemail, right? So if you guys, uh, this is the same one with a little additional logic. If you remember, I said the dial application sets the dial status variable when it exits. Could be set to busy, could be set to no answer, or something else. 
Here we call the voicemail application, but this time we're calling it with an argument, okay? And the idea here is, uh, here's the number, so it's 7001, and here I'm using the if function, and inside of that if function, I've got this, this uh, same kind of conditional language. So if dial status equals busy, return B. If dial status does not equal busy, return U. So this whole thing here, out of the, uh, yeah, out of the if, is just really going to return the letter B. So if I call the phone and the phone is busy, it's going to return the letter B. If I call the phone and it's a no answer, it's going to return the letter U. B or U is an option that I pass to the voicemail application, and the voicemail application has different behavior. So if I pass it the B option, it will play a busy message. Typically, this would be something like, hey, this is Billy. I'm currently on the phone. I'm busy. Uh, I'll call you when I get off. If you pass it the U, then it will play the unavailable message. This is typically something like, hey, this is Billy. I'm not in the office right now. I'll call you when I get back. So you can, you can pass that feedback to your callers and have an unavailable message and a busy message pass that data dynamically based on what the variable is when it comes back from, from the dial application. So uh, I will leave that there. And we've basically made it through our entire content. So for the next 15 minutes, I'll, uh, I'll basically just take your guys' questions on what we just covered there, variables, functions, expressions, or conditional branching, or um, you know any other uh, topic that we covered for the day. Do we have uh, any questions right here? Oh, this is, right. Yeah, this is a very astute question. And so the question for, for those on the camera is, hey, he notices every time I go to the voicemail application, I always have a hang up priority afterwards. Is that really necessary? And the answer is, no, it's not. The idea is once you go to voicemail, you leave the message, and then you hang up, right? You don't return to the dial plan to continue operation. Uh, you can return to the dial plan uh, from the voicemail application via uh, some options you can pass. So for example, you can pass like the asterisk option to, to route to the asterisk extension, and then that might continue dial plan processing. But it's still not really going to fall through. So I'm not aware of a situation where you would exit voicemail and fall through the next priority. It's not really necessary, but it's good best practice. So as a best practice, I always put hangups at the end of every extension. Uh, and the reason is because when you start getting into pattern matching, if you have a lot of complex pattern matching, you can, you can have a call end up in a place that you didn't, didn't anticipate if you don't explicitly terminate the extension. So um, you, want to, you want to make sure that every extension ends with a hang up. It's just a, it's just a good best practice. It's not always necessary. And the odds are you'll probably never end up there. But it's something I do. And um, it's a good, it's good best practice. My question. Hmm. OK, uh, that's a good question. So the question is, are there any programs? Uh, in other programming languages, sometimes you can, you can run a po program that will kind of check your code to make sure it's well formed or to make sure that you don't have infinite loops. Uh, I'm thinking of like JS Lint. Um, if you code in JavaScript and you plug your code into JSLint, it'll kind of return to you like, hey, you use some bad form here. And 
some, uh, you know, maybe you have an infinite loop here. And the question is, is there like a version of that, is there a dial plan lint? And the answer is, I, not that I'm aware of. Um, really the best practice there for dial plan scripting is, like I said, to, to execute your code and to test it on the CLI using the verbose output to make sure you got what you needed. Um, Right, to, to, look at, to look at that output on the CLI, or you could dump that down to a log and parse through it to make sure that your logic did what you intended it to do. Um, the other question is a good question as well. The other question is, uh, you know, is there kind of like some basic examples out there of like basic dial plan? Um, and the answer is, surprisingly, no to it's pretty sparse. So if you think about it this way, um, you know, if you're building your PBX and you code your dial plan, are you going to be reticent to then share that online? Well, probably not. You probably don't want people to know the internal logic of your, of your dial plan and know the internal routing of your PBX or your customer's PBX. You're not likely to share that information. As a result, there's not really like this repository of like sample dial plans. The other side of it too is that dial plan scripting is such a like an intimate practice. It's, it's a very, um, it's particular to your instance. So there's no such thing as like a typical dial plan. So I've kind of showed you guys what that is. I've showed you how to dial endpoints. I've showed you how to create an IVR. I've showed you how to set up voicemail. Um, those are some like pretty typical kind of functions. Uh, of course, this is in the, at a very basic level. In our classes, we go a lot deeper. In Asterisk, the Definitive Guide, they go a lot deeper. Uh, a resource I would recommend is the Asterisk Cookbook. You can likewise, if you Google Asterisk Cookbook, you get the Asterisk Cookbook online. And um, but I would also encourage you guys to purchase a copy of that and support the authors. It's a small book. I, I got it in the mail, and it's it's super thin. And I was like, huh, that that's it? <laughs> like, like why did I purchase this thing? But the Asterisk Cookbook is actually chock full of some really good content, actually. And uh, so I, I recommend that. You can, you can uh, read the whole thing online. And like I said, I recommend buying a copy to, to, to support the authors. But there's a lot of common things that you want to do in the cookbook. Um, but then once you start getting into that, it's kind of like your dial plan is probably going to look a lot different than the guy next to you just based on what you need to do for that, for that uh, customer. Um, and then again, uh, you know, once you've created it, your, your customer is probably not going to be super happy with you sharing that dial plan. As a result, people don't kind of tend to share them. So it's kind of how that is. We have a question. Okay, excellent question. So the question is, if, uh, if I have a SIP endpoint, right, and that SIP endpoint has been configured with the, uh, the ADORNER account, and let's say I send multiple calls to ADORNER. Well, it's a SIP endpoint. It can receive multiple calls. When am I ever going to get a busy status? And the answer is, you're not. Uh, well, kind of you're not. That's a, that's a very astute question. So if you want to get a busy status. So for example, if you had a SIP phone in a call center, if your call center agent is on the phone, you want to send a busy status. You, you don't want that call center agent to be having like racked up multiple phone lines, right? You want it to be distributed to a different representative. The way that you do that is in SIP.conf, there is an option called call counter. You want to set call counter equals yes. When you set call counter equals yes, then you're able to monitor the status of a SIP endpoint. If call counter is equal to yes, then when you hit a SIP call and it's already busy, then it's going to send a busy message. The other way that you can send a busy message is you can force it to be busy when you hit the ignore button. So if you're on the phone and the call comes up and you hit ignore, that will send back a busy, that will send back a busy status message. That was, that was a really good question. And then we had another one here. Uh, I was wondering, is there an open variable called the sent variant? So say you dial that to 1001, it's just like you're putting a variable for, for um, the sent line, you just put that variable in there instead, or is it 
Yes. A absolutely. So the way that looks is like this. Uh, this has got a little bit of my logic for my session tomorrow, but I'll show you what that looks like. It looks like this, okay? So what I'm, uh, what I'm doing down here towards the bottom is I'm calling the, uh, I'm calling the voicemail application, and instead of passing it a, uh, instead of passing it a hard-coded number, I'm passing it a variable. And you know, this is some more complex logic. But it, the basic premise is true, is I've, I've now made a dynamic voicemail uh, way to route my voicemails. Instead of, uh, instead of going to 7001 hard-coded, I'm going to whatever's in ARG2, which is based on the subroutine. That's a little complex. For today's lesson, it would look like this. We would say extend equals greater than, uh, what are we going to call this, 100, 1, uh, dial, sip, slash phone, 20 seconds. Same, next, uh, n, voice, mail, extend, b, or whatever, you know. So in this case, I, um, you know, instead of hard coding that, and so now, I mean, you, you, I'll, if you guys come to my session tomorrow, I'll show you guys subroutines. Didn't have time to cover it today. 